This video is partially made possible by Gigabyte. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video review. Today we're going to be looking at the Hyper TX3 EVO CPU cooler from Cooler Master. And there it is, a small little cooler for a small price, but does it cool well? That's what we're going to find out further in the review. Let's have a look at some specifications first. The heatsink consists of aluminum fins and also three 6mm heat pipes which have direct touch here at the base. Direct touch makes transferring heat from your CPU to the heatsink much more efficient. There is a 92mm fan included which has a wide cable with a 4-pin PWM connection. And taking this fan off the heatsink is by the way very easy just by pulling these pins on the side here, like that. The cool master includes two more of these, so you could install an extra fan for a push-pull configuration. The included fan also has a number of specifications by the way, like the revolutions per minute which goes from 800 up to 2200, the airflow which is 15.7 up to 33.1 CFM, and also the noise level which goes from 17 up to 30 decibels. Now a few other things they include beside these brackets for the optional fan are the AMD and Intel brackets, a number of screws which you'll need during the installation, screws for the other optional fan, some rubbers which make sure that the vibration between the fan and heatsink isn't too great. Uh, something else, another rubber which you will need during the installation on a AMD processor. And some thermal paste. Now let's get to the installation. So now we're going to install the CPU cooler. What you first need to do is install these brackets and then we have of course four of these. Uh, on the cooler here, so we have to determine which uh, hole is the correct one. I'm guessing the middle one here. It's not really indicated well, so that's mm, kind of an issue. But I'm guessing it's the middle one anyway. So I'm gonna screw those on now, and uh, then we'll go further. Now, I mean, as you can see, I finally installed the brackets here. It wasn't that difficult. You just need to screw in eight screws. It might seem like these are a lot of screws, but honestly. This is perhaps better or easier than having to install a backplate because now I don't need to install a backplate because I have these kinds of uh, pins here. And it's very easy, but I'll show you a bit later. Uh, first what I need to do before I uh, put the cooler on is put some thermal grease on the CPU. And again we're going to use the uh, thermal grease from Zalman, the uh, ZMSTG1. So let's do that quickly. Alright, and that would be enough. And now it's very easy, we just take the uh, CPU cooler. Don't forget to peel off this label first, so... That needs to be done, because if you don't do that you're screwed, and I'm seriously saying screwed. Position the fan in the correct manner, like this. Well, normally, this is Intel, so I think you can turn it around. And then you just put the cooler on top, align the holes first, a little bit, there we go, and that's it, it's on, and we just press these uh, clips through, alright, and it's in, and at the end also don't forget to plug in the CPU fan power. Now having a look at the test results, the cooler performs really well and even also for small overclockings. You can see that it sometimes appears to perform better than the Hyper 212 EVO, but that is because while I was testing the cooler, the fan started spinning faster with the TX3, which it didn't do with the 212. So it's nice to see that it can cool better than the 212 EVO, but that's only when the fan starts going faster and thus also makes more noise. As conclusion, we can say that this is a very good value product. It performs very good and it doesn't cost too much. It's quite tools to install even though you have to screw in 8 screws in total, but you don't have to install a retention plate, which sometimes is a bit annoying. Another nice thing with this is that you can very easily install it on a motherboard while that motherboard is still inside the case. Now the PWM fan does a great job, but as I said earlier, it'll jump in to help quite fast. So if you are overclocking and you're gaming on your system while you have this cooler installed, there's a good chance that you'll hear the fan a bit more. This is normal, but maybe a little downside. But all in all, I'd have to give this cooler the brilliant award.
For a full list of pros and cons, visit the website by following the link in the description box. You can leave questions there or here on YouTube. And also don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks to Coolmoss for sponsoring us for this review. And I'll see you guys in the next video.